October 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapter 17 and 18 from the Old Testament. The sin of Judah is engraved with an iron chisel on their stone hard hearts. It is inscribed with a diamond point on the horns of their altars. Their children are always thinking about their altars and their sacred poles dedicated to the goddess Asherah set up beside the green trees on the high hills and on the mountains and in the fields. I will give your wealth and all your treasures away as plunder. I will give it away as the price for the sins you have committed throughout your land. You will lose your hold on the land which I gave to you as a permanent possession. I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you know nothing about. For you have made my anger burn like a fire that will never be put out. The Lord says, I will put a curse on people who trust in mere human beings, who depend on mere flesh and blood for their strength and whose hearts have turned away from the Lord. They will be like a shrub in the desert. They will not experience good things even when they happen. It will be as though they were growing in the desert, in a salt land where no one can live. My blessing is on those people who trust in me, who put their confidence in me. They will be like a tree planted near a stream whose roots spread out toward the water. It has nothing to fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no need to be concerned in a year of drought. It does not stop bearing fruit. The human mind is more deceitful than anything else. It is incurably bad. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, probe into people's minds. I examine people's hearts. I deal with each person according to how he has behaved. I give them what they deserve based on what they have done. The person who gathers wealth by unjust means is like the partridge that broods over eggs but does not hatch them. Before his life is half over, he will lose his ill-gotten gains. At the end of his life, it will be clear he was a fool. Then I said, Lord, from the very beginning, you have been seated on your glorious throne on high. You are the place where we can find refuge. You are the one in whom Israel may find hope. All who leave you will suffer shame. Those who turn away from you will be consigned to the nether world, for they have rejected you, the Lord, the fountain of life. Lord, grant me relief from my suffering so that I may have some relief. Rescue me from those who persecute me so that I may be rescued. Listen to what they are saying to me. They are saying, Where are the things the Lord threatens us with? Come on, let's see them happen. But I have not pestered you to bring disaster. I have not desired the time of irreparable devastation. You know that. You are fully aware of every word that I have spoken. Do not cause me dismay. You are my source of safety in times of trouble. May those who persecute me be disgraced. Do not let me be disgraced. May they be dismayed. Do not let me be dismayed. Bring days of disaster on them. Bring on them the destruction they deserve. The Lord told me, Go and stand in the people's gate through which the kings of Judah enter and leave the city. Then go and stand in all the other gates of the city of Jerusalem. As you stand in those places, announce, Listen, all you people who pass through these gates. Listen, all you kings of Judah, all you people of Judah, and all you citizens of Jerusalem. Listen to what the Lord says. The Lord says, be very careful if you value your lives. Do not carry any loads in through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Do not carry any loads out of your houses or do any work on the Sabbath day. But observe the Sabbath day as a day set apart to the Lord, as I commanded your ancestors. Your ancestors, however, did not listen to me or pay any attention to me. They stubbornly refused to pay attention or to respond to any discipline. The Lord says, You must make sure to obey me. You must not bring any loads through the gates of the city on the Sabbath day. You must set the Sabbath day apart to me. You must not do any work on that day. If you do this, then the kings and princes who follow in David's succession and ride in chariots or on horses, will continue to enter through these gates, as well as their officials and the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem. The city will always be filled with people. Then people will come here from the towns in Judah, 
from the villages surrounding Jerusalem, from the territory of Benjamin, from the western foothills, from the southern hill country, and from the southern part of Judah. They will come bringing offerings to the temple of the Lord, burnt offerings, sacrifices, grain offerings, and incense, along with their thank offerings. But you must obey me and set the Sabbath day apart to me. You must not carry any loads in through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. If you disobey, I will set the gates of Jerusalem on fire. It will burn down all the fortified dwellings in Jerusalem, and no one will be able to put it out. The Lord said to Jeremiah, Go down at once to the potter's house. I will speak to you further there. So I went down to the potter's house and found him working at his wheel. Now and then there would be something wrong with the pot he was molding from the clay with his hands, so he would rework the clay into another kind of pot as he saw fit. Then the Lord said to me, I, the Lord, say, O nation of Israel, can I not deal with you as this potter deals with the clay? In my hands you, O nation of Israel, are just like the clay in this potter's hand. There are times, Jeremiah, when I threaten to uproot, tear down, and destroy a nation or kingdom. But if that nation I threaten stops doing wrong, I will cancel the destruction I intended to do to it. And there are times when I promise to build up and establish a nation or kingdom. But if that nation does what displeases me and does not obey me, then I will cancel the good I promised to do to it. So now tell the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem this. The Lord says, I am preparing to bring disaster on you. I am making plans to punish you. So every one of you stop the evil things you have been doing. Correct the way you have been living and do what is right. But they just keep saying, we do not care what you say. We will do whatever we want to do. We will continue to behave wickedly and stubbornly. Therefore the Lord says, Ask the people of other nations whether they have heard of anything like this. Israel should have been like a virgin, but she has done something utterly revolting. Does the snow ever completely vanish from the rocky slopes of Lebanon? Do the cool waters from those distant mountains ever cease to flow? Yet my people have forgotten me and offered sacrifices to worthless idols. This makes them stumble along in the way they live and leave the old reliable paths of their fathers. They have left them to walk in bypaths in roads that are not smooth and level. So their land will become an object of horror. People will forever hiss out their scorn over it. All who pass that way will be filled with horror and will shake their heads in derision. I will scatter them before their enemies, like dust blowing in front of a burning east wind. I will turn my back on them and not look favorably on them when disaster strikes them. Then some people said, Come on, let us consider how to deal with Jeremiah. There will still be priests to instruct us, wise men to give us advice, and prophets to declare God's word. Come on, let's bring charges against him and get rid of him. Then we will not need to pay attention to anything, he says. Then I said, Lord, pay attention to me. Listen to what my enemies are saying. Should good be paid back with evil? Yet they are virtually digging a pit to kill me. Just remember how I stood before you pleading on their behalf to keep you from venting your anger on them. So let their children die of starvation. Let them be cut down by the sword. Let their wives lose their husbands and children. Let the older men die of disease and the younger men die by the sword in battle. Let cries of terror be heard in their houses when you send bands of raiders unexpectedly to plunder them. For they have virtually dug a pit to capture me and have hidden traps for me to step into. But you, Lord, know all their plots to kill me. Do not pardon their crimes. Do not ignore their sins as though you had erased them. Let them be brought down in defeat before you. Deal with them while you are still angry. God, I always love when you include uh, pottery type references in the Bible because it's something I actually understand. Uh, I'm not a crafty person or artist person, but I come from a family 
with lots of arts and crafter people. I'm just not very talented <laughs> like they are. Um, and, and back in biblical times, uh, they wouldn't just go down to the local craft store and get clay in order to form the pots on, on their wheels. Uh, they would actually just dig it out of the ground. And so I always think about, you know, how we came into being. Um, and it always comes back to memories of just coming out of the ground uh, and going back into the ground, as the Bible later on talks about. Um, and then what they would do once they took it out of the ground is they would take the stuff out of it, um, the rocks and the twigs and branches and anything else that was kind of garbage. And I think about when you come into our lives that you do that, um, that with the amazing forgiveness of your son, Jesus Christ, you know, all of that junk in our life is made clean. The clay is, is made pure. And then... I don't know how many people have actually ever thrown a pot on a wheel before. But if you just stick the clay on the pot and allow it to spin, eventually the clay will spin off of the, the turning wheels. Um, sort of like in our life, if we don't have you in control of our lives, if we think we can be in control as the pot, eventually as things start to spin around us we're just going to go flying off and land on the floor big thud um, if we allow your masterful hands to surround us then we feel safe and comforted and protected and we stay even though things are spinning around us we stay centered on the wheel um, then as we allow you to apply strength into our life as we allow you to take more and more control of that piece of clay as we allow you to take control of our lives then it builds up into something um, our growth goes up uh, not only on the potter's wheel but in our lives um, i would like to say it deepen but in this case it would have to go go up like the the pot would and then you fashion us into what you need us to look like now, if I'm a hunk of clay on a pottery wheel um, and I decide to fashion myself, I'm not going to get very far um, because only you know what I should look like. Only the master craftsman knows what I should look like. I, as a piece of clay, don't have a really good clue as to what I should look like. So by allowing your strength from your hands to mold me into who I should be, out will come this this beautiful piece of pottery now interestingly enough it's not pottery at this point i am still really weak and so if i falter and your hands are removed from me um, usually from my own selfishness of wanting to take control then for people <laughs> who have tried to make pots before they know exactly what happens that whole beautiful piece of pottery just crumples onto itself it just completely falls down um, and I've had a lot of those meltdowns in my life where I thought, gosh, God, I've got this. I'm good. I'm independent. I, I don't need your hands to help and guide me. And I just fall to pieces. And then your hands come and your strength comes and, and you protect me once again and you build me back up. Uh, and what's incredible to me is I can be a crumpled mess and you can build me back up into something gorgeous doing what your will is for me here on earth then once you've created me if I don't go into the kiln if I don't go through fire to become hardened I will forever be soft and at the mercy of anything that comes in contact with me I think of situations where I've crumpled before because I hadn't gone through enough fires uh, to harden me not harden my heart but harden my resolve and my faith in you God um, that you would be able to take care of that situation. Um, that my trust was deep enough for those situations to happen. Pottery, uh, one of the amazing things about it, about it is once it has been hardened, once it's gone through those fires, once it's gone through that kiln, um, is one of the most uh, permanent pieces of fixtures um, out there. Um, when archaeology... Uh, people study areas almost always they can find pottery because it's something that is permanent something that sticks around whereas clay itself just melds back into the ground and there's no point to it um, 
literally because it's just going to go back into a blob, a shapeless blob. But something that has been molded by by the artisan, by the craftsman, and then fired, been put through through the test, uh, has survived and has survived through thousands and thousands of years. And to me, that's amazing. And uh, it's such a perfect example of when Jeremiah is talking to you about um, the nation of Israel, and you're you're very clear of this whole pot didn't even make it to the fire it just fell apart in my hands because they pushed me away and now I have to rebuild them into something else I have to destroy this nation and I have to rebuild it and so I want you to understand what that process looks like um, God it's such an amazing example of what you are in our lives what you do in our lives um, and I just love that that illustration of your arms just wrapped around me holding me, guiding me, strengthening me, um, and even being there to watch over the fire <laughs> that I'm being put through uh, to gently take me out and take care of me uh, after I come out of those fires as well. Your love is so consistent and so pure. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.